Hi, Deb. It's so great to see you. Happy winter day. It is definitely it was still winter here in Maine. <laughs> yes, it's wintry here too, but we're getting little signs of spring, which I've been taking in. The winter aconite is up in my garden and blooming, and the snowdrops are a half an inch high, and the crocuses are coming up, so I'm full of hope for spring. Yay, you are lucky. Wow. <laughs> So after participating in the full moon magic webinar last week, I have been obviously thinking a lot more about the moon and really watching it rise because it rises right outside my bedroom window. And I was touched by the fact that just, just coming together as a community and listening to you talk about the moon I always watch the moon and I think, oh, I, I know how important it is to pay attention to the moon, but I really tuned into the moon and tuned in with this community. And I've been watching it wane every day and shift the time of its rising. I'm not so much so good at getting up in the morning and watching the set yet, but because it's the other side of the house and it's cold out. Um, but then I'm also seeing these signs of spring and how that's connecting with the cycles of the moon. And I was thinking about how really these from full moon to full moon to full moon connects the seasons. And I was wondering if you could share a little bit, you know, in your upcoming course, The Healing Garden, you're going, you're going to teach about five seasons, which I hadn't ever thought of before. I actually had thought of it, but I love how you explain it. And I was wondering if you could share a little bit about the five seasons and the importance of um, how they you know, influence us in our psyche and in our health. Yeah, well, we all are, have the gift of being human beings living with our beautiful earth. And depending on where we live, um, whether we live close to the equator or whether we live far north or far south um, in relationship to the equator um, has to do with how prominent seasons are and also you know how prominent each of the individual seasons are. So for, for me, I can use as an example, I live in Maine where we actually really have five very distinctive seasons. And that is sort of following the traditional Chinese system because they bring in late summer as a season, but we actually have late summer here. So we have you know, winter, which tends to be kind of one of our longer seasons. I wish that spring was a little bit longer. I think for you in Pennsylvania, you have a little bit of a longer spring. And then we move into summer, but late summer is a really interesting season because it's considered to be both the transitional season. So between winter and spring, we have a transition. Between spring and summer, we have a transition. Those are it, traditionally in Chinese system related to the earth element. And then late summer, which for us here, I say is when the goldenrod really starts to bloom. And that incredibly kind of expansive quality of summer starts to shift early August. You know, we, we approach that midpoint between the summer solstice and the fall equinox. And so the month of August, for me, I really start to feel like we've kind of, we really reached that, the high point of summer. We've also, it's almost like reaching the, the full moon. And then we slowly start the waning towards the fall equinox and towards the winter solstice. So that late summer really is a very distinctive fifth season, mm -hmm. which can go on for several weeks um, because fall for us really here, fall starts to feel a little bit like fall in September, but we really are still kind of dancing between late summer and fall. And depending on where people live, that transition between summer and fall is gonna either be very short or kind of non-existent or much more prominent. So each of these seasons has an energetic quality to, to them. How do I feel in my, in my emotional kind of life through the different seasons? And physically, how do I feel in the cold dampness of winter or that kind of rising up energy of spring or the incredibly expansive energy of summer and then that beginning to wane late summer into fall. And then we 
shift to winter. So each of these seasons, it's, I think for me, really inspiring to be paying attention. Like you described about paying attention to the moon. It's also the same, you know, spring is like we're beginning, you know, it's almost like late winter, early spring is like the new moon and spring is like the, the beginning of the waxing all the way to the full moon at summer and then a waning cycle. So we see this beautiful waxing and waning cycle of the moon. And we also see that every month, you know, every mm -hmm. single month with the moon, but also we see that waxing and waning through the seasons. We also see the waxing and waning through every single 24 hours, but in relationship to the seasons. Mm -hmm. um, and then in relation to our bodies as well yes. and our lifetime. Yeah. yeah. So we're living where we really are living nature, whether we're connected to nature or not. Yes. We're living in mirror of the cycle of the moon or the season or the day, the sun. Yeah. I love that. I mean, I have never, it's such a simple concept, but I've never really thought about it. I think it's like bringing, and even for people who live in urban areas, we all are living here. So just really about bringing our, our awareness um into our daily lives and it doesn't have to be this long outdrawn kind of process it's, it can be really like okay i'm really living in late winter right now and just paying attention to that and how do i care for my body and how do i care for my emotional life how do i care for my spiritual relationship with this season you know winter is such much more of an inward time very much in some ways like the new moon you know, just at, just before the new moon, the darker the moon, also a very inward time. So how we care for ourselves more with just more awareness. So yeah. do you find, like, do you believe that there's a healing benefit to actually developing your awareness? Is there, is there a, something that we lose by neglecting to notice the cycles that are around us? Yes. Can you talk a little bit about that? I can. I think living in alignment with the seasons means to me really paying attention to their qualities and how they influence the physical body, human's physical body and our emotional life. And when we are out of alignment with each of the seasons has very particular qualities. And when we are not aligned with these qualities, we are out of balance. And we are, I think we all know that when we're out of balance, that can continue to just you know, be exasperated and get even bigger and the sense of being out of balance can grow. Or if we begin to have a little bit of a sense, I think probably all of us have felt like, oh boy, I, I feel out of balance today. And, and if that goes on and on and on without us really tending that, then we're gonna start to actually have um, emotional and physical uh, experiences in our bodies that are um, just, we don't feel well. So when we feel out of balance, we don't feel well. When we can start to feel more connected to the seasons and to really be aligning with the energy of each season, that actually allows us to 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 have a sense more of of balance and you've lived in you know you've lived this way you've created your daily rhythms and practices around this philosophy did you study it or is it really from your personal experience or both yeah i would say both because when I, in my early 20s when i began to be really interested in both studying um, biodynamic agriculture. Biodynamics takes in to consideration incredible detail of paying attention to the lunar rhythms and the solar rhythms and the rhythms of the year. So biodynamics, I would say, in, inspired me to begin to really be much more observant and to begin to study and read a little bit more. But even more than that, I would say in my, just my life of celebrating the seasons and the moon, I really turned towards um, some, I would say some of the more spiritually inclined astrologers. And there was also, you know, 35, 
40 years ago was when there was a strong resurgence of mostly white feminist writers who were really exploring the old goddess traditions of Europe. And so I began to be really curious and to kind of follow those threads of study and really took me to really the Celtic will of the year to understanding the solstices and the equinoxes and then the cross quarter days between the solstices and equinoxes. So those are some of the uh, areas of inspiration for me. And then as I just continue to develop my own studies and relationship to both being a gardener and also preparing medicine and working with myself and others and students that also began to weave in um, more awareness of just how the body feels in through mm -hmm. all these different cycles, the daily, mm -hmm. you know, the daily rhythm, the lunar rhythm, the seasonal rhythm. And I began to actually really for myself recognize, wow, if I begin to pay attention here more, I feel, for one, I feel more at peace inside of myself yes. in relationship. And I feel a connectedness. So many of us feel so disconnected. And I, so for me, that sense of real connectedness with all the rhythms that I've just described and the seasonal rhythms, I feel, I don't feel so lonely. I don't feel so alone. I actually feel like, wow, I can lean into the energy of these seasons. I can lean into the rhythm of the moon, the daily rhythm of the sun. And when I'm just paying attention a little bit more and more and more, it just, it builds just um, a natural way of being for myself. And that comes from these years and years and years and years of just paying attention. And there've been times where I've been less connected than other times. And when I realize that I'm not quite as connected as I would like to be, I really feel that, um, that sense of lack of connectedness. Mm -hmm. And it draws me right back because I know that a sense of connectedness is really where I start to feel much more whole and happy and at peace and joyful in myself, which I think are really natural states of being. And there's many, many reasons that keep us disconnected from those. And so for me, this is also a way to bring health and happiness and joy into my daily life. Hmm. So you've really woven a tapestry from yeah. teachings from here, teachings from the plants, teaching from biodynamics, um, observing nature, being in nature, in your garden, in the dirt, and yeah. you've created this way of living that has basically kept you from being fragmented and frazzled and yes. pulled apart by so many uh, non-nature forces, we'll call yeah. them. <laughs> and I would say that, you know, that the whole world, like we are, we are connected and we're connecting with everybody because of the virtual world and the virtual world um, has a real draw for connectedness. And I also want to say to people, we have to find that balance so that it's like, we have to also get, go outside. Don't mm -hmm. just look at nature on your devices. Like make sure that we find that rhythm of being able to actually be outside and visit water and visit places where you can see the moon rise or the moon set and feel and smell and taste and touch the plants and the soil and begin to build the real direct experience into your, into your daily rhythm, not just one that you're reading about or on your devices, but actually get yourself outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So can I ask you to share um, what your, you know, your wish, your goal, your hope is for students who are participating in the Healing Garden program? Yes. I, I mean, I've been a gardener for over 45 years and there's so much deep, deep joy that comes from me. And whether somebody is a gardener or not doesn't matter because we all are connected to plants and trees and water and soil, you know, the warmth of the sun, really the four elements. Each of us is connected in our bodies, we are these elements. And then in the natural world that we live in and the natural world that we rely upon feeding us with food and with all these healing plants. So for me, 
I feel so happy and inspired to help share others the invitation and some of the real, um, you know, information that somebody can begin to incorporate into their daily lives in a way that's that allows them to feel much more connected to the natural world, to all these natural rhythms, and to the plants, because we're going to be talking about plants and certain plants that help us in the different seasons, because and it and different people are going to be living in different places. So I will speak to that because not everybody lives where it gets to be zero degrees and in the winter time. And some people live where it's even colder than that. So there's going to be this real range of helping each of us understand where we live, our relationship with this shifting, because the natural world, every single moment is shifting and changing. Mm. Moon is always changing. The Earth's relationship to the sun, day and night, is always changing. That affects us because we are in relationship with these beautiful planetary forces. So it's like helping us to be more aligned and more connected. And in that alignment, it's almost like I can feel my spine almost like. It's like it allows us to be a little more upright, our feet feeling the, the energy of the earth rising up into our bodies and meeting that solar and lunar energy coming down into our bodies, just allowing us to feel really more alive and in that way, creating a sense of balance and, and wellness, well-being. Well, I think I need this. <laughs> I can tell you I'm so honored to be hosting this class with you. And um, I, you know, we already have over 100 students who have jumped in. So that's a real tribute to the work that you've done over the years. I know that um, so many people are really grateful for the opportunity to study with you this way. And since we can't be in person, we will do it virtually. I mean, it would be incredible to do it in my backyard on my 90 acre farm, but that's okay. We can do it on my 90 acre website. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am very, very happy and honored. And it's so much fun for me to be able to be working with you and um, your wonderful team of people and all the wonderful women who are gonna be joining us teaching on Thursdays. I, I feel so happy to both be sharing and also to be able to be the recipient of all of their wisdom. I think it's gonna be such yeah. a beautiful offering. There's so much learning that will happen in yeah. the community from everybody participating. That's wow. partly what I love about it too. Well, I know you have things to tend to today, so I'll let you go, but I just wanna thank you for your time, for sharing your beautiful wisdom. We love you so much. Thank you, Cara, so much. Thank you, Deb.